Hey everybody, this is Rustin with Metalholic Magazine, Metal Nation Radio, and with us tonight, Matt Marinelli of Borealis. How you doing, brother? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. Thanks. The new album, Purgatory, coming out July 7th. Well, it's actually already out overseas, right? Yes, it is. It was released June 19th. Uh, how does that work? They they put it out like weeks earlier across the ocean, and we have to wait over here. But uh, well, I think yeah, I think it was uh, the whole goal is they wanted to get this CD out before the North American tour, right? So they uh, I guess they have a little more control over in Europe where they can get it out quicker. But uh, for North America, they had to wait. I don't know exactly how it works, but I know they had to wait before they could release it. Well, let's talk about Borealis. Obviously, pretty pretty decent name going on there up in in Canada, but you know, there's there's not as many people who are aware of you guys down here. And this year marks the band's tenth anniversary, and we haven't even gotten a real taste of you guys yet. So, before we talk about the new record, can you give new listeners a little backstory on the band? Because you guys got started back when you were in high school, didn't you? Yeah, it was back close to 2005. Uh, we, we started out as a female-fronted band. It was more along the lines of like a Nightwish or an Epica type style. And then uh, that we got, we got to play with uh, Camelot and Epica at the time, but uh, it just wasn't working out with the female singer. So um, when uh, she left, we um, we were looking for a singer, and we actually had a show with uh, a band called Sonata Arctica in Toronto but we didn't have a singer and I was like okay well we need to play this show so I just stepped up and uh, the reaction was good and ever since that night I uh, became the lead singer and then shortly after we recorded uh, our first album called World of Silence and that was a self-released album so um, it's it, it got out better than I was expecting just because we didn't have a label or anything like that so it was just merely internet but we got out enough anyways to get our name out there um, more so in Europe and then uh, a few years later we uh, we wrote the album Fall From Grace and that's the one that kind of put us in the map in Europe and uh, we did that through Lion Music and then uh, we had a, a fairly big hiatus we went on tour with Saxon and uh, we also did a few European festivals and then, uh, and then life kind of got in the way, and people went to school, and people had uh, starting a family and getting married. And then, uh, after all that time, we eventually wrote Purgatory. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little bit, a little bit of time for for the new album, but I think it really turned out well. Um, and we'll okay. talk about the album in just a moment. But before we get to that, for you personally, what led you into making music sort of your life's work? Um, I don't know. I, I've loved music for so long, ever since I was real young, and uh, it was just—it was always just a dream, like anyone, just to oh, I want to play in a band and I want to do this. And uh, once I, once we started up this uh, Borealis, it just started seeing like it was something that we could possibly do, at least make a CD and get out there. Uh, our goals are always really small because we want we want to make them approachable. So. We'll start off with something like, oh, we want to play this venue in Toronto. And um, and then once we play that venue in Toronto, we're like, okay, we want to go on tour. We want to do this. And we just kind of check it out. Our end goal, obviously, is to is to uh, play music for a living. But uh, as of right now, we're just so fortunate that we can travel the world and play with all these bands that we've looked up to our entire lives. Right. Well, and Purgatory, as, as we said, long time coming, but... I, I really think it's going to be a breakout album for you guys. You know, you guys have been sort of working on it for the last couple of years. Tell us a little bit about the journey of putting this record together. This was a long, uh, a long journey, uh, for sure. The one thing that we did different compared to the other albums was we did everything in the studio, which was uh, different for us. So it was kind of a learning curve. And because uh, our drummer, Sean Dow, he did all the engineering uh, for the album, we we could take a lot more time to do it because we didn't have studio time that we booked. I know on, on the previous album, we're like, okay, we booked the studio for a month. We need it done in that month. This one, we had a little more luxury, so it we had more time to do it. But also in that journey, um, our drummer went to school. Uh, our bass player, Jamie, he had uh, a baby, and uh, I'm getting married in the fall. And just life kind of gets in the way, so we, we kind of had to postpone um, 
every once in a while to do something. And when our, our drummer was in school, we really couldn't do much at all. So that was the time when I would just start to write and do stuff like that. So that was mostly the reason why there was such a long hiatus. But for future albums to come, it's not going to be like that. Um, we're already writing for an even newer album just because we don't want to do that to the fans anymore. Right. Plus, you've sort of been sitting on this one for a while anyway. But, you know, no, I exactly. It, it paid dividends, though, because Purgatory, to me, is your most complete and cohesive effort so far. So sort of sonically and lyrically, relative to what you've done before, tell us about Purgatory from your perspective. Well, Purgatory is definitely um, our most mature album, for sure. We wanted to try something um, a little different using uh, doing the concept album uh, approach, which isn't really uh, unique. It's done all the time, but we just thought it would be fun to do. We really love movies and stories, and it was just something that we could create or something that we could do, like we could actually create a story with it. What's different is how how much darker this album is than our previous ones. We go into some pretty serious, I guess, tones in, in some points, but uh, we think uh, it fits the mood that we're trying to... Uh, get out of this album now how does the songwriting process work in borealis is it primarily you or is it a collective process it's collective for sure i'll like some most of the time i come in with an idea so i'll have a riff and then uh, I'll, I'll bring it to the guys it could be just like an intro and a verse kind of thing and then from that point on then we all kind of say okay this you sound cool maybe if we did this kind of thing or that kind of thing and then we try all these options out. and then once we agree on one thing then we move on to the next so it's definitely an entire band writing process. Right. Well, and since since the uh, previous record, this is the first record with new guitarist Mike Berguglio, whose name I probably just butchered. <laughs> oh, you actually you nailed it. <laughs> How did his presence sort of impact the new album and the creation of the songs and everything? Uh, it was good. It was just a new, it was a fresh, uh, it was fresh input because uh, I've been with the other guys for so long, even before we even started the band I've, I've been friends with them so it was nice to have a, a fresh set of ears and just personality in general to come in and put his two cents in and uh we think it really helped uh this album for sure because it just gave a little bit of a fresh tone to it right yeah it's often been said that the third album is where a band sort of defines their sonic signature if you will do you feel you've done that with purgatory or do you still feel that there's a ways to go in sort of refining who you guys are musically. Well, I think we're getting pretty close to what we want. We like we always wanted that heavier element, but we always wanted to make it very atmospheric um, with the orchestrations. Mm -hmm. Not, uh, we didn't want to be over overly fantasy, but uh, we just we really think the orchestra sets a certain type of mood to the uh, the songs that we uh, have always really enjoyed. So this album is the closest to what we would want um, in the future. If there is any differences in future albums, they won't be as drastic as Purgatory from the previous albums. Right. Well, usually there's evolution from album to album, but it's usually like right around that third album where you sort of solidify this is the foundation of our sound. And it seemed yeah. like that's where you were at with this one, but I, I figured I'd ask. So. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> Now, you you guys, you mentioned, as you said, you originally started out as female-fronted, and, and you actually brought in a guest vocalist uh, on this record. I heard it immediately on uh, From the Ashes, the second track. Did, yes. Did you write that song with that idea in mind to do that, or did, did that just sort of come later? Is that, what if we throw in a, a female vocal on this? Well, I, I think uh, it, it spit out that From the Ashes was uh, a song morally done by... Uh, our drummer Sean Dowling, he had the vision of uh, including a female vocalist in uh, in that song. He had a spot for it, and uh, it, it works well with the concept because she was kind of used as the mother character, right? Uh, for, for that part, so it, it it fit. He Sean mentioned that very very early on in uh, in the writing process that he wanted a female to take. Uh, th those parts and we agreed 100% because we think any sort of anything different that we can add will help uh, help the album because sometimes people want to hear something a little different every once in a while yeah no it added a nice touch who who actually is the vocalist on that that you tabbed y yeah so the vocalist uh, her name is Sarah D and uh, and uh, she she's a friend of uh, our drummers 
I guess they went to school together and they were working on a project and he found out that she could sing and uh, that's pretty much all that happened. He, uh, we asked her if she wanted to do it and she was more than happy uh, to play on the album and uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Well, it turned out really well. And now you've had some, normally when you first put out an album, you can't ask the quote, what's your favorite song on the album or which ones do you like the most because they're, it's all pretty fresh. But as we said, you guys have sort of been sitting on this one for a while now. You've had some time to live with these songs. I know they're all important to you, but are there one or two that perhaps mean a bit more than others for some reason? The one I uh, thought turned out the best for me was My Peace, and that was the song when we were in the writing process that really got we got into the style that we were trying to get into, and that song really uh, did it for us. We What I liked about it is it has many elements of, it has the heavy aspect, it goes uh, to a little more softer aspect, and it also has the progressive element as well. So it kind of holds a lot of different elements in that song. So that's I, I would say my piece is, uh, as a, s- a complete song, is one of my favorites. Nice. Is is there any song on the album that you sort of, when you were trying to get it completed, you just sort of struggled with because there was like, this was all perfect, but there was just something missing or something didn't quite fit and it took you a while to wrangle it together? Yeah, that one was uh, Welcome to Eternity was a tough one. It was more vocally for me because we had all these parts, we had all the music finished, and there was one part where I just I liked it so much just with the orchestrations. And my biggest worry was I didn't want to make a vocal melody that like made it worse. So I was trying so hard to think of a vocal melody that I would be pleased with because the music stood out so much for me when I was listening to it that it was tough for me to find something that would really stick. And uh, I'm happy with what I ended up doing, but at the time it was uh, probably the most frustrating part. <laughs> there always seems to be like one song like that. You got to take it kicking and screaming down to the yeah, last minute. It but... was the last one I recorded. So, <laughs> see, see what I mean? All right. So now you guys will be doing a summer North American tour. You alluded to it a moment ago with Evergrey and Voyager, two of my favorite bands. That's a nice lineup. Oh yeah. It's an awesome lineup. We couldn't be happier. To, uh, be a part of it. We think it's uh, the best collaboration of bands to be with. And I think the fan base that we'll be playing with are all people who are in it or into the same style of music, which is a big plus, especially in North America, because sometimes it's hard to find a group of bands that all do the same or similar style. Right. So I think it's, uh, it's going to be an outstanding tour. Yeah, it really should be. I was excited when I saw that. And then, of course, disappointed because you're not coming anywhere near me. But what can you do, right? (laughs) So before we get out of here, just to to learn a little bit more about you and what motivates you and everything, give us three albums that changed your life. Ooh, that's a good question. Okay, well, one would be The Inner Circle from Evergrey. Mm -hmm. Mercy Falls from Seventh Wonder. Uh... I would say Century Child from Nightwish. Oh. When, it, when it first came out, it, that was a I really liked that one. Yeah, it seems like for a lot of people, there's like these these milestones where you hear an album and it just sort of tweaks the direction you were going and it, it takes you yeah. into a into a different thing. Great, great choices. All right, so just for fun, before we get out of here, is there a TV show or series that you're hopelessly addicted to? <laughs> well, sadly, I just got into the show. Orange is the New Black. That's and, a fantastic uh, show. Why would that be a bad thing? <laughs> well, I don't know that some people may criticize me. I am just, I'm late in the game with it, but uh, I've enjoyed it so far. Awesome. Matt Marinelli, Bori, Alice, the new album, Purgatory, already out over in Europe, coming out July 7th here in North America, going to be out on a fantastic tour with Evergrey and Voyager. So looking forward to it. Thank you so much for taking the time. Congratulations on the upcoming nuptials. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) And we look forward to seeing you on the road. Awesome.